Well, did you know that conservative states across America are getting new residents at a record pace? Well, you would if you dropped by MikeHuckabee.com for my daily news analysis. So here's the story. A new report from the Census Bureau shows that compared to the liberal blue states, red states are winning bigly among people who are voting with their feet and relocation. Over the past year, the biggest population losses were in the states of New York and Illinois, while the biggest gains were in Texas and Florida. As one former Illinois resident commented, quote, it's taxes, it's corruption, it's politics, end quote. And this is not a recent trend. Several years ago on my radio show, I started judging the popularity of California's far left government by comparing the cost to rent a U-Haul truck from LA or San Francisco to Dallas or Houston, and then vice versa. Now U-Haul provides a substantial discount to anyone who will drive one of its trucks from Texas to California, since there are so few customers willing to move in that direction. The current rate for a 15-foot truck for six days from L.A. to Dallas is nearly $2,000. Dallas to L.A., 910 bucks. Because you're doing U-Haul a favor by taking the truck back to California so someone else can get out of there. <laughs> now, of course, the downside of a blue state exodus is that people are moving to successful red states, and then they're voting for the same liberal politicians and policies that caused their last home state to fail. I second the longstanding proposal by Glenn Reynolds of Instapundit that red states should establish well, let's call it a welcome wagon service for new arrivals to red states, explaining to them exactly why the former state they lived in stunk. And please don't vote to turn that into where you are now. And here's why the red state model works so well. A new study by the Competitive Enterprise Institute found that in President Trump's second year in office, the executive branch issued the second fewest government regulations in history. By the way, you know what year was the fewest new issued regulations? They were issued during President Trump's first year in office. <laughs> Might have something to do with it. All right, let's take a look at what's on your mind in the news. Peggy from Fayetteville, North Carolina writes, President Trump's decision to remove our armed forces from Syria and Afghanistan seems like an invitation for ISIS and the Taliban to fill the void and wreak havoc over innocent people in both nations. Am I missing something? Peggy, you may not be. I'll be honest, I, I've had some concerns about the president's policy. I wanna get out of all these places where we've been entrenched for so long. Uh, we've been in some of these places forever, and I agree with the president. My great concern is what happens to people like the Kurds and the Syrian Christians. I do know that when Lindsey Graham, who's been a strong, strong advocate uh, to remain active in some of these areas, met with the president, he came out, and was much relieved that there was a method to the madness and that he felt like that this is not just a pullout that will leave the Kurds and Syrian Christians vulnerable and will leave a great opening for ISIS. I just wanna say I'm cautiously optimistic. I hope the president is right. I'm not absolutely convinced he is, but I hope he is, and I hope Americans can put more focus on building America than building Syria Afghanistan, Iraq, and the other countries of the world. That I do hope for. We got this from Tim in Tacoma, Washington, who asked, why did returning Senator Mitt Romney trash President Trump this week? Even his RNC chairman, who is the, his niece, said that he ought to focus on the opposing party, not the president. Well, I totally agree with you. I don't know about why Mitt did this. Here's my uh, recollection. Mitt Romney was all too happy with President Trump when he was Donald Trump, the businessman, and wrote him a great big fat check to the Mitt Romney campaign in 2012. They shared a hug. Mitt was quick to take the check and the endorsement and was all smiles and happy. Then when then Donald Trump, the candidate, got the nomination, Mitt Romney went out and made a blistering speech attacking the Republican nominee, the same party that Mitt had been willing to take their support. And it was a brutal attack, and I couldn't figure out why would he do that. Then after Donald Trump became president-elect, Mitt Romney went to New Jersey and sat down where he all but begged to be the Secretary of State. Why, you would have thought they've been chums forever. And then 
He didn't get that job, but he ran for Senate. And before he can even get sworn in, he's already trashing the president. And I'm thinking, we've had enough of guys like you. If you want to go to Washington and be a Republican, then for heaven's sakes, act like one. And if you're not, do the honorable thing and join the other party. Well, that's all the time we've got for now, but we're going to be back with more common sense and plain talk next time on Facts of the Matter.